I recently had the privilege to meet up with one of my good buddies and also while seeing his entire gallery, I had the privilege of assisting him in setting up a Pacific Northwest Paludarium Aquascape. The friend in question is my good buddy Dennis, who most of you will know as Tiger Boy on Instagram. Dennis specializes in macroalgae aquariums, and I've never done anything like it, so I was able to go down to Seattle and check out all of his setups. I also had the privilege and opportunity to assist him in escaping his first ever freshwater system, and it was the UNS Foresta Paludarium. I'll cover that in a little bit. So without wasting any more time though, let's get straight into his gallery. Okay, yeah, so tell me about this tank here. Yeah, so this is the UNS-30A Dual. It's made for both freshwater and saltwater aquariums. Um, this is basically just macroalgae dominant. There's probably close to 20 different species of macroalgae in here right now. Uh, no fish, uh, just, just some snails. And then the one next to it. So the one next to it, uh, I wanted to go a little bit more minimalist. And so there's only like two different or three different species of macroalgae. But the centerpiece is the Fiji yellow leather coral you see in the center. It's a type of soft coral, um, but this is in the UNS 30A. It's made for fresh water, but I have an additional wave maker in there for added flow. Nice. Now we got the famous macroalgae bowl right here. Yeah, so this bowl, I mean, it's as simple as it gets. It, I got the bowl from, you know, like Michael's. And it's kind of hard to put filtration on a bowl like this, so it's filterless, but I have two small water pumps in there for circulation, uh, a tiny heater, and that's about it in terms of equipment. But it also has probably almost, almost 20 different species of macroalgae. There's some soft coral, you see the pulsing xenia, the white coral that looks like it's opening and closing. This one right here, yeah. right? Yeah. And there's actually a couple other easy to keep soft coral in there. And the, the larger centerpiece uh, is uh, actually a type of anemone. Oh, how cool. And then you got this big mangrove thing yeah, here. Yeah, this little red mangrove sprout. How cool is that? Okay. Now we have the newest addition. Um, do you want me to take the lead on this one? or? <laughs> So I just finished building this um, with Dennis's help. Um, it was with Dennis's help. I didn't do it all by myself. But this is the UNS Foresta 35E. And we wanted to take a slice out of the Pacific Northwest because that's where we both live. I think we really achieved that pretty well. This is manzanita wood, but I think it just looks super cool. Pause right there because I wanna add a little more context about the planting of this paludarium. Dennis and I had originally gone to Aquarium Zen, which is a aquascaping shop in Seattle. I've got a tour of that place that I'll put up right here on the screen. And we had picked out all the plants and the hardscape that he would need. We also had some hardscape lying around that we were able to add in on top of the stuff we got from Aquarium Zen, but there was something missing. Both Dennis and I felt that to truly embrace the Pacific Northwest theme of this tank, we really needed a lot of moss and lichens. Being that we live in the Pacific Northwest, Dennis and I checked out his backyard and walked around for a little bit. We were able to pull some really natural pieces of moss and lichens off trees and rocks that were just lying around in his backyard. So it really doesn't get any more Pacific Northwest than that because it truly just came out of his backyard. And to be honest, just adding that natural element from his backyard really just was the cherry on top of this scape. And both Dennis and I agreed that it just, it kind of brought the scape even closer to home, knowing that some of the plants and the decorations were from Dennis's backyard. It was 
right there. He collected it locally and it just, it looks so good. Now we built this scape a couple of weeks ago. And so Dennis has told me in the recent days that he's continued to go into his backyard and collect lichens and moss and little things like that, that he's added to the scape here and there. And the scape is just looking better than ever. And both of us are very pleased with how it turned out. Anyway, back to the gallery tour. How about this one right here? Yeah, so this is the UNS 90 LA Peninsula. It's a little over 20 gallons. Kept this one very simple. I wanted to showcase the red mangrove that you see to the right. Really nothing else in here but live rock. There's a bunch of snails, hermit crabs, one tail spot blenny in there, uh, and a sea urchin. Nice. I like it. Yeah, this is the largest macroalgae tank in my gallery. It's the UNS90U, so it's about 68 gallons. But this definitely took the most work for me because I had to drill the glass, made holes, added an overflow to attach it via plumbing to a sump, a 20 oh, okay. gallon sump underneath. And, and then, is this like built on rock or is this just like tall plants? Yeah, so there actually is like a live rock mountain underneath that. Oh, I guess I do, I do see some rock right yeah. here. There's, it's a mix of rock and branches, branching live rock. Okay. But then you can see the macroalgae has just kind of overtaken the whole thing. I feel like so, it's taken over everything. Yeah. <laughs> As macroalgae does. And you got clownfish in here. Yeah. Anything he, else? These or? are like, they're called the Darwin variants. Um, they're black and white. Um, there's a blue throat fairy wrasse, which is the bright red one. With the, yep, with the blue underbelly. There's actually pajama, like five pajama cardinal fish in here. It's really hard to see, but you can see them hiding. Oh, right here in the in the middle, right? Yep. Oh, that's cool. There's five of them in this tank. And there's also a, a possum wrasse, which you probably won't see, but it, it basically hides in the macroalgae. And then a bunch of snails and hermits. How cool. But this system is like the most high tech because it has the auto doser set up. Yeah, you got. Auto dosing here. Yep. All the nutrients. The new pump on the side. The last one here. What do we got? What do we got going on here? Yeah. So this is my effectively my grout tank. Um, I've cleaned it up quite a bit, but usually it's just full of macroalgae. It's the most established tank out of all my macroalgae tanks. So it grows macroalgae pretty well. So oftentimes I'll put trimmings in here that I get, let it grow out, and then I'll basically pull those trimmings and move them into my other tanks. How cool is that? Oh yeah, I see you got a little cup back here to grow things with. How awesome is that? Yeah, but uh, it's like roughly a 30 gallon all in one. Wow, that doesn't look like a 30 gallon. It looks like smaller. Yeah, I think the back chamber probably takes up a oh, yeah, yeah, chunk yeah. of that. Fair enough. The volume. Fair enough. <laughs> awesome stuff. So that's it for the gallery tour. I had an absolute blast coming into Dennis's space and checking out all of his amazing aquariums and his setups. To be honest, I kind of feel like I need a macroalgae tank now. So let me know down in the comments if you think I should start a macroalgae tank or if you like that my channel is solely freshwater. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're not subscribed already, please remember to go ahead and do so. I'll also leave a link to Tiger Boy's Instagram. You should definitely follow him. He's got some incredible content and now he's got some fresh water in the mix. So definitely go give him a follow. I'll leave a link in the video description below for his channel. So check that out and subscribe to this channel. Thanks again for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.